all the stage is set and it is of course just to repeat and for re recording a record purposes as it was and that is that is the 12th of October this year 2013 and the grand final is underway 15 minutes a half and very obviously Bonnie Hayes made it through to the final as did Lavi and uh, have they left an early mark the answer to that apparently is no we said it before in the semi-final, of course, uh, is a term that will be won on points. And that's not taken from the ring by any matter of means. Lavi in the black and amber. The young Joe Biggers. Rushing time and 14 yards out. Opening the account for the local side over the bar and their opening score. Had a comprehensive victory in their semi-final. It's just concluded about 15 minutes ago. Down into the centre is Connor Smith for Lavi. He's looking for somebody loose and he's found Liam Maguire. Just a little bit further in. Ushin at the first attempt. Slight misjudgment and a good defensive play coming from Bonnie Hayes. And there, number two inside. The big team McCabe. I'm going to run through the list of players in a moment that I almost made up myself, if you like. But uh, a little bit difficult to sort of put a handle on them, so to speak, but we'll try and do as best we can. Number seven is Sean Sheridan for life. Trying to poke it up and indeed is successful in doing so. While we see only from a distance how Barry Hayes were doing in the pitch down many metres away from here, I do know that the performance from Lavi in their semi-final well, it certainly was very inspiring indeed. Indeed, they've uh, started to ring the alarm bells quite early in the early stages of this final here against Bally Hayes. But there's a good bit to go. And indeed, uh, as Bally Hayes gather up from defence on the far side of the field and go to try and slip through their lineout as best one can. There are a lot of people involved in this. I'm just trying to calculate the number of players they have in their panel, something like 28, which certainly would sound alarming and alarm the bells or put them into chime from the other end of the situation, if uh, you get the drift of what I mean. But um, this is how I read it from the team sheet. It's a little bit disconcerting, but nevertheless, Hugh McKay wearing number one, and then Dylan Bridey wearing two. This is for Valley Hayes. Sean McKiernan on three. Paul Riley wearing four. Nothing disconcerting about that. Feet with Dowd wearing five, and Luke Tully wearing the number six. That would normally be the player that would play at centre half back, but it is, of course, a number ten. Final. I might have mentioned in the semi-final that it was an under-12 semi-final. My corrections and apologies indeed for that. That would deprive you, if you were 16 years of age, young lads, that you'd be too old for minor if you went by my calculations. So don't worry about that. Wearing number seven for Bally Hayes, Dermot Mulcahy. Killian Brady, possibly 14 or 18. Ushin Tackney, nine. And Michael Wall, Wearing number 10. That could be miles out, but this is very definitely the name of the players that are involved in the panel for Bally Hayes in this year, 2013. Fawn Chicane had a number one on the team sheet. Amy Carwell had a number two. Nicole Walsh was wearing a three, again on the team sheet, while Lucy J. Grant had 28, and I think may be out there involved in the action there a moment ago in the defensive area. And uh, then Ronald Callahan was also included in that, had a number five in the team sheet. He was also a John of a Jack Brady wearing 29, Alex Power wearing 26, Colin Brady on 12, Connor Jordan wearing five, and so the list goes on to Pierce McManus, who has number six, and he's followed by Cormac Hegarty wearing number nine with Keen Lynch. Well, a bye, there's no number there. Michael Kelly had two on that team program, Connor Smith had 11, and Recon Tackney wearing number 30 with Ethan Coyle on 8 and Cormac Wiley wearing number 10. Maybe not, but very much involved 
for this final. And on the far side for Lavi, Dean McCabe wearing number 10. And here come Lavi's Connor Smith now from 30 yards out, planting the ball literally on the chest of Russian Tynan. And he duly carries off the honours and gets the ball over the bar. That may well be their third point. I often think, even at underage level, that it's a great pity that the scoreboard isn't put into function or operation, and it gives people an idea, not least somebody up here, well, who exactly is winning and by how much. Here are our Bally Hayes now attacking. So, 21 yards out, that's their number nine. And as he plays it himself, the answer to that would have been a big yes. And again, he may be one of two ushings on the field. If so, he's the Bonnie Hayes one, and his surname is Tyke. Young supporter there, just having a little wander, wondering how the bets will go. Of course, by the time that the final is over. Down towards this side of the field, I get to the lavy one in a moment. No, we brought it to you, the panel. It's for the record and for the final. The finals are always a very big occasion, and this will be the final, of course, for the Joe Cullivan Memorial Cup. And the person, as I said earlier in the semi-final, who is uh, very much involved and interested in sport in all walks of life, and a man that loved his game, loved his sport, and indeed loved by all. So then... Lavi's team sheet goes something like this. Thomas Plunkett wearing two. Carl Darcy wearing three. Liam McGuire on four. James McBean on five. After that, Connor Smith would wear six. And in rotation, wearing number seven, Sean Sheridan. Ushing time in the eight. Nine, Francie Lynch. And the Battle of the Giants out in front now is Dean McCabe. Wears number 10 and Kill McGuire wearing 11. Ryan Colvin 18. Owen Connolly on 19. Don Highland wearing 13. Owen Daly 14. Mossy Colvin 22. And Tom Clark wearing 25. Connor Smith wearing 16. And Brendan Lee wearing 15. And for the life of it, there's a number 12 there that I inadvertently forgot to check out at half time. But I simply the surname is King, I'm not so sure of the That's how it is, and that's how it was, in about seven minutes or so, gone into the opening half of the 15 half final that it is, and the final, of course, that just like the semi finals, will be won on points. I'm sure that in the event of a draw, there would be extra time. That's why we started at half ten. There's another point for Bally Hayes, who you can see the bit by bit, they're creeping back into it. Now, I also inadvertently left out of that 27 or 29 people panel from Bally Hayes, two players that have popped up here and another piece of paper in front of me, and they include wearing number three, Evan Brady, and also wearing 16, Andrew Maguire. So Andrew is one of the Maguires from Bally Hayes. A club that has contributed also in no small way in the name of great games down through the years. Some great, huge, big names. It doesn't always have to be about big names, but indeed players that were involved with county teams at many levels down through the years. Number 28 for Bally Hayes was Lucy J. Grant. What a nice name. Down towards the far side. Nice chip out there by the number 11. Could very well be Connor Smith. That is, of course, the Bally Hayes. Connor Smith. And I do believe, though Bally Hayes have landed a few there in the last uh, 10 minutes or so, that Laughing may be just about holding the balance of power in this game so far. They win that free on the far side. Nice ball controlled back here by Alex. That is. Did well to fall in any threat coming from the rally attack there and get the ball back out. See? 
Just imagine. Nevertheless, it's Bonnie Hayes and inside. This whale of a youngster in Rehan tackling, grabbing, and coming out free, but it was a foul out around the middle. Ravi is free. Kerry Maguire. Booted out towards the far side, chasing back. James McBean, but the referee had signaled Pat Clark, by the way, from the Killing Kerr Club. There's always a theory and a story told about this grounds and the great rivalry, of course, between the referee's club and this particular club. That if you walk too far down to the left, well, so do it, you end up in Killing Kerr. Meanwhile, here is Bonnie Hayes coming out of the sack, and again, it's on its par. Foul as he tries to get out field with that one. And certainly, the youngsters in the green and gold, which is, of course, uh, uh, Bonnie Hayes, uh, have improved the game considerably in the last uh, seven or eight minutes or so. And it's that kind of a morning or an afternoon where the teeth would literally chatter with a cold breeze coming through the bushes here behind as the halls begin to drop to the ground. It's a real sign of autumn. And the leaves, of course. Meanwhile, back to normal service now. And Alex will lob on in. And back for it, the number nine. Shin Tackney for Bunny Hayes. He's got a courageous blocking down there. Late tackle, in fact, a late foul on the lovely youngster, which may very well be their number four. It's difficult to spot them out, the numbers from here, but uh, if so, it'll be young Liam Maguire. Anyway, I'm sure they'll forgive me if that is incorrect. And here's where Bonnie Hayes are holding on to this game. So this is the game the and that is in the defence who are standing rock solid. That clearance out over the side, huh? As you can see, every picture will tell its own story. And this is the number two, Dylan Biodi. I hope for Bonnie Hayes. I don't want them saying, what's he talking about? Here's Lavi coming forward again, 30 yards out. Inside of the 14-yard line. And that one has gone out to the right from Ushin's right boot. And so somewhere in there, it's about four points to three. And I'm open to correction on that. We cannot now, of course, at this stage, be a mile away from the half-time break, 15 minutes aside. With Lavi having uh, defeated Castle Lahan in their semi-final, and by contrast, it was Laura that fell victim to Bonnie Hayes in the other semi-final, played a short distance down the park. Now then, James McBreen might have been the man that was involved in here a few months ago. Now the number five. Anyway, here's Bonnie Hayes. This could be something. Watch to say, why didn't they go for the goal? The the matter is that there are no goal. goals don't count in this game. So over the, uh, over the bar there by Ushin Tackney and the point for Bally Hayes. That certainly brings them very close if it doesn't tie things up. Alex Parr once more. Almost within scoring range, but a bit of defensive work back downfield. Killian Brady, perhaps, though on the shoot, wearing 14 along with eight. Nevertheless, the ball poked out into safety beyond the 50 yard line. And it's Lavi heading inside. This could be something if the centre forward can get it up, Caleb McGuire, and draft it in. But uh, there's a bit of a tail to it as it drops out and wide. Just have a look at this. One hell of a run, and it could land for the ball, or anything. 
Meanwhile, Valley Hills killed the Lions once again, and again I say the attack standing quite firm. With um, Taki, it was that delivered that one down to the middle, but equally now, Lavi are very much back in the defence and back in the game. From their defensive area, they're building from there. Ushin Tynan was fouled 25 yards out, referee awarding the free in. That free will be some 13 mile, in fact it's about uh, 28 or 30 metres out from the goal area. That's the angle there. Conor Smith now, it's about 15 or 18 metres in from the near side. Well, of course you can judge that for yourself. It's not every day of the week you see a left of a pet. He struck it very well. There's the half-time break, but it did just go that yard or two out to the right. And as we all know, when they go out there, they don't count. But it was a nice booted effort, and again with the left boot. Perhaps this young man's a southpaw and can strike with either. Well done, half-time. And just about a point in it if there is. We'll get clarification on the score very, very shortly. Okay, stage set for the second half, and an even deep, while the young ones are putting their wheels into motion, I would have to say that my calculations are in tatters. And by that I mean that the half-time score was, in fact, Valley Hayes three points and Lavi two points. My apologies if it offended anybody, and I'm sure it didn't, but it's uh, Valley Hayes that were leading. I did make reference at different stages, particularly in the closing ten minutes or so, that they had worked and built on their game, Bally Hayes, and built on it, particularly from defence from the back. Well, the score may not have been all that high, but nevertheless, they did lead by that one point at that half-time break in the final of this Joe Conlon Memorial Trophy all Cup. Now, Lavi might be able to change that, as the referee is going to reward a free in about 13 metres out for the foul on Ushin Tynan in this under 10 final and it's a little to the right off centre he's going to have a go himself it's probably a nice little distance out at the same time for an under 10 it makes no mistake anyway and now it can certainly clarify and confirm and all that goes along with that that the sides are now level on three points each now we'll try and set up our own little stall here when it comes to the scoreboard and just uh, have a go at keeping as best we can records for that. Three each. Favour of nobody. Lavi attacking again from short range out to the far side. Connor Smith trying to simplify the angle with the left boot and that one has gone out to the left and so the score remains three points apiece. A nice snappy kick out. What I like about this, uh, and indeed the semi final was no different, and that is no delayed action. It's all poetry in motion as they move hard and fast and furious. Meanwhile, for Bonnie Hayes, the lady in red, boy number 28, Lucy Jo Grant. Lucy won't like me for saying that, but of course I don't mean it. Out to the far side of the field. Here come Bonnie Hayes now again from the 21 yard line. And the number 26 was Alex Parr with the ball. One of them seems to be signaling that it was a 45, but uh, I think uh, he's the one that gets the rubber stamp from the referee. And so it is a 45. No, hang on for a minute. It's not, it's just an ordinary kick out. Dean McCabe for Lavi. Far side. Luke Tollick boots it, close to the sideline. Still in play, got a little bit mixed up there with the second ball. Way back in the background in the direction of the stand. Meanwhile, that's what you say is play on. Nobody committed anything, but now they have. And it's uh, yet another free to Lavi. It's about uh, 25 or 28 yards out. A few steps in from the far sideline. 
lovely inside that was slapped down in there by the number eight for Bally Hayes, who, going by the program, could very well be Killian Bray. So it's still three points apiece. We're about five minutes or so into the second half of part two of this Joe Cullivan tournament final with Joe. The late and indeed great Joe. Referee has again blown the whistle. It may well be James McBrain that was down but certainly not out. He restores his confidence to a degree that he can get up and take the free himself and in doing so, drop it short of the semi-circle inside. But the ball dropped to the ground and beat it way down field there. Good by his by Brady once more. Here's their number nine, Oshin Tackney now. A score up here now would restore a one-point lead. And indeed they are within range of that as the number nine will beat the ball home and over the bar and now it is four points to Bally Hayes and Lavi. They are on three. Number twelve for Lavi. Will be the king of all kings. To say that in the pack of cards, the one with the ace is the only one that doesn't have the moustache, and I doubt it under ten that there would be one there either. Anyway, there's another point for Barry Hayes involving the number nine once again, bringing their tally up to five points now. And Lavi, they are on three. Now they're beginning to know now that they must cut a deal with the defence up to the forward line if they are to restore the confidence that they had so much so in their semi-final and Barry Hayes in control by five points to three. Perhaps also in stature, that bit bigger and perhaps that bit stronger. Nevertheless, that's an obvious three, about 35 yards out from the goal area. So can they build on that now and get it in around the house, as they say, and hope for something bigger and better? Now, just to when we talk about the weather, I suppose, in football terms, we always talk about the, the breeze rather than anything else. It may be bitterly cold and all that. Looks like a whole march of going by, but uh, it's still in play, very close to the ground. The umpire has now signalled, in fact, that the forward did drop it out over the end line, so it's wide. That breeze that we were talking about is probably not an advantage to the game as such. Uh, it's a breeze that's uh, blowing, certainly, coming in across the hedge and coming in across from the Assam Ridge direction, which means that it would be northeast and biting bitterly cold and blowing across the field. So of no real benefit whatsoever to the game itself. No advantage, I wouldn't have thought. Anyway, enough from the mad office. Back now to the action. And uh, Dean McCabe, or Lavi, down at the other end, the number six, Luke Teller, Bonnie Hayes, Alex Pryor, 26, number two for Lavi inside, Tomas Plunkett, loving it, way up towards the 45, the number 12, once again, Young King, right into the goal area, the centre forward inside, and uh, the ball poked out, the knee poked out to simplify the angle, but I'm afraid there's a bit of a tail to it and it's out over the end line. Go oh, back down to the 45 meter line. And Connor Smith setting up an attack for Lambie inside. There's a goal that's going over the bar. And that brings confidence back to a degree and also within hail because at this point in time with a lot about uh, 10 minutes of a big play into the second half it's Bally Hayes leading by the skin of their team. I hope the youngsters understand that one. But it's five points to four, one point between them and Bally Hayes are leading. But Lavi are thriving with time now 
five minutes or so, maybe six left in the game. The tutor may not work for us this afternoon, but we'll have a fair idea when we get to that stage. Referee is going to reward a free outfield for the foul on the defence, and Bonnie Hayes get it back. So there, number 13, Lugan Tack foul about uh, 28 yards out from the goal area. And even if that young man had a pair of stilts, the number five, for Lavi, he couldn't get to that one. Nobody could. Out to this side, ball breaking now to rushing tackle, 25 yards out, close to the carpet, into the far side, and the ball sent out to the right, out over the end line, and in fact, it has gone wide. Lucy J. Grant was involved in that attack there. And talking about attacks, who's young Tackney now? But for Lavi inside, it is that number 12 uh, once again. And I think it may be Ronan King. Uh, Ronan uh, King, the number 12 for Lavi. Anyway, we can qualify that. It should have been long done. But anyway, here we go now, up along this near side of the field. The number 11 inside. It very well have been Kieran McGuire, as indeed Connor Smith. There with a bit of backup, loving the right, of course, very, very close to the 13 meter area thereabouts inside. But uh, Bonnie Hayes under a bit of pressure, ball out over the end line, and the ball has gone wide. You can come right and say that there's still that one point and it's five points. And if so, Bonnie Hayes that are holding out now. Becoming more tense now in these last few moments of this final. Played on an October day, namely Saturday the 12th of this year, 2013. And as time will tell it, of course, in years to come, they will, of course, graduate from under 10s to under 12, some involved there already, then to under 14s. Then under 16, minors and under 21s, they'll do their stint at senior. And when they're 33 or 4 years of age, for the game of football or sport in general, they'll be too old. They might turn to golf. Sushin Tyne and the one that's gone to the right and right. And so the score remains 5 points to 4 in favour of Bunny Hayes. Of course, there are so many other sports that you can play on right up until it's time to go. Well down to the 45 meter line. Lavi put in a lot of pressure on in these closing moments, but much of this pressure has been far too wasteful, particularly in the last five or six minutes or so. Sometimes can be the kind of opportunities that uh, you pay the price for if you don't convert when you get the uh, the chance to do so. Meanwhile, back in the back line, wearing the number 30, Rehan Tackle. Referee has blown the whistle and there's going to be a free in. Dear me, could we be in for extra time? That's about. Uh, Oh, it's about 18 metres out or thereabouts from the Ballyhill's goal area inside. It's not the most difficult angle in the world, but nevertheless there's a certain bit of pressure on. It's a nice kick in, it's a high kick in, and it's over the bar. And the sides are now level with one more to go by my calculations. And Connor Smith, I do believe, was involved in that one. It seems to me to be that they have five points apiece. And we're into the last minute or two now of the game. Here come the young Joe Biggers once again. And from the far sideline, literally speaking, but the defence had it under control. And inside, there was the full back wearing that 3 0. Young Tecna down to the middle of the field. Free is going to stall the play here now for a moment. And when normal service resumes, Thomas Plunkett says to be okay, and it's a lovely free, and now from 25 yards up, 
the next score could win this game. It's over the bar. Would have been instrumental in that. However, there's a score at the other end. And the ball over the bar there from their number nine, that is Bonnie Hayes, number nine. And <laughs> I'm just looking at here, the, the Carl McHegarty is wearing number nine as well. well there's an old question of an old scene how to confuse a carryman. You put two shovels up against the wall and ask him to take his pick. So that is what we're going to have to do now. It does appear to me that the sides are level, so we're going to have to take our pick, I think, and perhaps go to extra time. Oh, well, here we are now, in the wake of extra time on this bitterly cold day. Late, late point, of course, bringing about the draw. Well, one thing, though, they dominated for some period. It's an early point in this extra time for Bally Hayes. They seem at stages in that um, second half of normal time that they might have been the side that would go forward and win it. But it was a mighty comeback by Lavi and in fact uh, so much so that they went to point up but then Bally Hayes uh, forced the draw thus bringing around this extra time. I hope that doesn't sound a little bit uh, complicated my description of uh, what was going on in the last few minutes or so. Is, uh, about to launch an attack, and that attack about to be broken up as well. Three awarding a free. I assume it's five or six minutes of a half in this extra time. Not most unusual, but still, you know, it just goes to show once again it's a game, it's an, an outdoor sport, it's a Gaelic games. Match and it's between the youngsters of Lavi and Barry Hayes competing in the Joe Conovan Memorial Cup final here at the grounds in Lavi on this uh, Saturday, the October the 12th in this year 2013. Well, there's the perfect angle there for a left footed kicker. Let's see how Conor Smith will do with this one and don't come back and tell me that's not him. Oh, very, very dodgy. You know, if the Hawkeye was a Belgian and had another look at that, they would be saying that there was a certain part of the ball might have dropped down and into the net, but there was no way it was a goal in there, so it was never going to be a goal. It was a dodgy one. This is a lovely free. Well, Bonnie Hayes has restored the lead, of course, in the early seconds of the second half, being one point up. Meanwhile, next part, number eight then, Kenny and Brady boosts it way out to the far side, poking it out of any danger. We full back here for Bonnie Hayes. This is a curling dropping ball that can't break anywhere. That's what they think, and it's a um, lovely punish and it would be threat or attack indeed from the green and gold. Meanwhile, out to the far side of the field. Now this is a loving ball that's held in there once again by the full back. I think it's a, that's a Rehon tackle. There's an infringement within the rules, and so the referee spotted that, and this is going to be a lovely free. It's a fair distance out, but nevertheless, it could very well, if accuracy comes into it, it could tie up the situation once again. It's the right boot of young Ushin China that's got to be tested out with this one. It's a little to the left off centre. And he makes no mistake, and over the bar. There he is. If we just move down maybe the picture there for a minute, if you can 
do that there, Alan. I see some supporters that I've recognised all worked up. We'll come back to that in a moment. Here's uh, Bally Hayes attacking. Fielding first and foremost from the kick-out. Loving it right in. Suppose in the event of a draw at the end of this, there will be a replay. Another day. And that's another story. Meanwhile... Killing and Brady, who was involved in that move inside, they're going forward. I'm just looking at the team sheet here, it's a little bit confusing. Brady, young Brady, seems to be uh, wearing a 14 and an 8, but anyway, that's neither here, here nor there at this stage. It's going to be a free out field now for the lovely youngsters down towards this side of the field. I was just about to mention there in a moment ago, you would have noticed in the picture, I see an old gale and James Riley. Uh, very fond of his bicycle up into the recent past. Jones in the air and a moment or two before that we had a very walked up man in the cave along the line. And down they all. Here's Brady again. Close range and wide. So then, seven points apiece. That's what the man said. Customer coming into this, and I'm not so sure of that. We get a good value for money. It's a long stretch. I was just looking at it there from the goalpost on the right, right down to the goalpost on the other pitch, down at the other end. If you were heading for Dublin and started off here, it'd be a good start. Meanwhile, back with the action. Bonnie Hayes free. It's about 45 or 6 metres out. Luke Tully nominated himself then. It was a re election, so it's Alex Barr that will now apparently take the free for Bonnie Hayes. And there's a bit of a swipe to that one. Drops those 10 or 12 metres out to the right, and so the score remains on seven points each. Down to his 45. Kyle pods it forward. The frame blows a whistle. It's going to be Bunny Hayes free. Machine tack near Bernie that will take it. It's about 50 yards out or thereabouts. And in fact, it's a bit less than that. And perhaps it's about 40 yards out. But it was a mighty drive by him. And uh, it's a point, I believe, that's over the bar. And the umpire. Is it the emperor? It was one of the selectors becoming a little bit hot and bothered there and trying to get the defence, I think, to sort themselves out. But Larry Hill seems to have eight, and it seems to be seven, and that's a half time in this extra time of this uh, Joe Cullivan Memorial Cup final here at Navi this afternoon. Well, here we go. Last call, last hurrah, so to say. And after that uh, normal time, it was eight points to seven in favour of Bonnie Hayes and there's a ball that could hop anywhere <laughs> I like the, the I like the courage and the admiration of the young man inside you know if the run goals didn't count in this that would have been a grand score but no it's all about points as I said earlier spelt with an O so then Bonnie Hayes inside about to, tree, about to, to attack rather and the referee had spotted something, so it's going to be a free out thing. And I know if uh, I sometimes say things or put them a little bit out of context, the people in Lavi are very good at forgive me. I was talking there, and just checking it out as well, about a gentleman that I noticed down along the, the sideline, whom I was of the opinion was James Riley, whom I knew quite well some years ago from his sighting experience in and out of town when he fought. That's his brother Charlie, in fact, down there. But I, I was glad to hear as well that only last week James was here as well and two great characters, Helen Harpy and Great Bill Mister. Coming your way. Meanwhile, Rowan King lobbed it in. 
I think I may have also established something else there, but uh, Molly Hayes had a number 14 that, uh, well, Kenny and Brady were in eight at one stage, but uh, the other, uh, number 14 is very definitely young Haggerton. So he's comic Haggerton, in fact, uh, wearing number 14. In fact, he was quite effective in that first half. A cozy little picture on a chilly afternoon. Oh, and over the bar. Now the sides are, are level on eight points each. Eight points each, indeed. Yes, uh, Cole McHaggerty involved there uh, in the action in that first time. Somebody made reference again. Very, very, very hard time. Part of the under, of the Valley Hills under 10 side. Of course, 21 years is a mighty long time, but we we'll get there, Cole Here's Barry Hayes trying to get there inside but finding the game a little bit difficult but there was an illegal pickup of the ground and the referee will award the free outfield to Lavin. Tomas Plunkett. Downfield. Captain the kick very well will be a king. Roman out towards the far side. I don't know who's the captain. It's just a turn of phrase. Meanwhile on the far side Roman King once more. And throwing the ball forward. So it's a lobby free. Dangerous from inside, but the defense were first on the ball, slapping the ball back out. Mainly the players would be loose around Mark and Young Smith from 25 yards out to try his efforts, but was unsuccessful. And so the ball went wide, and the score remains eight points apiece in favor of nobody. Lobby coming back. The general talk was that uh, Barry Hayes would have been the bigger and stronger team, perhaps all right, in uh, the earlier stages. They still are, by the way, but uh, nevertheless, but, um, Lavi, the local side, have come back remarkably, and uh, now they find that they share the scores on eight points apiece, and there's still about five minutes or so left in this extra time. On the far side for Barry Hayes was Lucy J. Grant. Lavi's number four, Liam McGuire, to tug it up and out. That the referee has blown the whistle, and so he wins himself a free. If that's the proper term of phrase to use, and Lavi with the free. And again, it's a I've noticed quite a bit of this here with these youngsters, and it's good to see that. Maybe I have a certain reason for saying that, but uh, there are quite a number of players out there this afternoon that can kick with both feet, and it's always nice to see a pair to be able to kick with the left boot. I always remember talking to a very famed Kildare girl of many, many moons ago, and he said good footballers should be able to kick equally as good with the left as indeed that of the right, or indeed vice versa. So then... Barry Hayes can now restore their one-point lead from this 30-meter area. If that went over the bar, but they're going to have to wait until next time. Ball kicked out. Down field. Back to Moss Plunkett. There's a man on the move with something on his mind from 25 yards out. But it's out to the left, and so the score remains. Eight points to Barry Hayes and eight points to Lavi. And here's this a nice bit of ball control there by the Lavi number six. Over on the far side, Haggerty to boot it forward to Barry Hayes. King to intercept for Lavi. Down on the far wing, Dylan Briardy. Or oh, Barry Hayes likewise, and uh, eventually clear up along the far side of the field. Lucy J is in there, but the ball is out over the sideline. And this is everybody's ball. They're all claiming it's a line ball for their side over on the far side. And the linesman, I'm sure, will have the final decision. And if the referee felt that he was incorrect, he could very well step in. But it was legitimate, and it was a line ball that it was to Lavi and they got. But Bonnie Hayes are back in the action now. It's 
from 50 yards out. They might be now about to restore the lead as Ashin Takni boots it over the bar. And now it's nine points to eight. And I'm going to be very, very careful with the score from here on in. Calculations need to be 100%. But to me, at this point in time, Molly Hayes seemed to hold the balance of power, albeit by the narrowest of margins. But not any longer, as that one has gone over the bar, there by that young man coming out there on the program whose name is Connor Smith, wearing number six, but the sides are now level on nine points apiece. What's another year? What's another day? What's another score? Will that come today? Well, there's about... No. Oh, the referee is looking at his watch, and uh, they're all looking at their watches, and the referee is coming across now, and would they be looking for a result or something here? Or oh, what's going on? You could say, you know, that we're into a second version of extra time, and that has all the hallmarks of that. If we might have also made an announcement to the youngsters even before the start of extra time that the next score would win it if the second extra time came up, I don't know. But what I do know is that there will not be a penalty shootout. And that's a ball that's gone out to the left and gone wide, and the score remains uh, rather nine points to Bally Hayes, and Ravi also are nine points of the course. And it's also loud. Interception. Handled backline. Down to the far side. Going down on it. James McBlean gets up and beats it forward. Ushing time at 25 yards out. Not too far away from the far side. A nice chip into Ronan King. Ronan will draft it across the area. Big full back inside of Leon. Tackney grabs the ball and the referee has blown the whistle and it's going to be a free out. A free out feed. I have no bones notion how long this will go on or whether it's to do with the next score or not. But anyway, being a winner, the referee is now going to reward a free to Ravi. It's just inside their own half of the field. Fatigue now, perhaps setting into it. It's just that the, it's just as well rather that humidity is about a thousand miles away at the moment because it's bitterly cold. Mm. A applause there for the young lovely player who. Unfortunately, picked up an injury there in the wake or in the heat of the battle there. Let's hope that it's not too serious. But one thing is for certain that there is youth very much on his side. Meanwhile, meanwhile, there will be a free now to Bunny Hayes. Mission Tackney. And then there's, Co uh, there's Cormac Hegarty wearing nine as well. Between them it is, it's a dangerous ball anyway. It's wide. That's the second opportunity that Barry Hayes have had. And I still go back to my own imagination, I suppose, and when all fruit fails to say, welcome home, I'm mean, not too far away either, but um, we're not suffering with information overdose or anything like that. But I get the feeling that it may be the score that comes up next that will win this final. And I did say earlier, it's just as well that it started in the morning. How are we here now? Good luck to it. Well, it's over the bar. And, uh, yes, that's it. That's the score that won it. The number nine for Bonnie Hayes. And uh, leaving the final score. 10 points to 9 in favour of Bally Hayes. Every picture tells his own story. They're simply elated. But, um, if I could say so just for a brief moment or two, 
Well done to all concerned. And of course, while well, Barry Hayes won it on merit there, first score in that second part of extra time to win it. That's the way they worked it on in the end. But that's the way it always there, never too far behind. That was the kind of the game it was. Credit to all involved in it. Those who worked on it have it here. And a credit to all the youngsters as well. And a great sporting occasion for them. Almost an all to the world, apart from the number of people that are here, but the excitement for all concerned, disappointment for Lavi, but look, I said it before, youth is so much on your side, and no doubt your turn will come. So it appears as though that the final score finally has arrived, but after normal time, they finished on six points apiece, then we had extra time. And at half time in that, it was 8 7 in Barry Hayes' favour. You had the you had the final time and the final score in that extra time of nine points apiece. And that question was posed. We answered it as well. Uh, would it be the next score that would win it? The answer to that was yes, Bally Hayes got it. The final score, 10 to 9. Okay, good afternoon everyone and a warm welcome here. This is the 14th year of the Joe Cullivan Tournament and uh, smashing a couple of games there. I think that final was as close to the Kerry Dublin semi final this year as you get. Also to uh, Joe Cullivan's daughter and granddaughter, Marcella and Rebecca's here, and his extended family, Nevis and niece and brother. Um, the annual Joe Cullivan's <laughs> This year, uh, it's Buddy Hayes' turn to win it. We went on for them. <laughs> before we do any presentations, just want to thank the people for doing some proofing here this morning, the referees. And don't fire some nice men in any way that helped out in any way. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Rebecca, if you come forward, please, and present the medals first to the other three teams, and then the winning captain and the medals to those. So we have uh, Pastor Ryan up first, please. <laughs> I 
Congratulations to Bonnie Hayes, 10 points to 9, time for the 4th. 